what's going on YouTube it's RTKL back with another video I know it's been about two months since I uploaded but I'm back at it now y'all I'm up to upload more often now as y'all can see the car looks completely different from what y'all seen two months ago since I last uploaded uh, my last video was me basically telling y'all that I had got the new motor installed and she was back up and running. She was back up and running, but I'm gonna tell y'all a little funny story about what, about what was going on for the last couple months. So basically, when I first got the car back, I had put in some, uh, some sea foam to kind of clean out the motor and just clean out the engine and everything like that. So I dumped in a whole bottle of sea foam, not knowing that it's a ratio that I had to uh, put it towards how much gas I had in my tank. So I had about maybe like three, four gallons in the tank and I uh, dumped in the whole bottle. So long story short is the whole, uh, for about a... What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? For about, uh, for about, um, what can I say? What can I say? Day. so we're gonna say so i was riding around for about two days and i'm like okay the, the car's smoking so you know I'm, saying? I'm i'm not thinking nothing of it i'm thinking it's just because of the sea foam was cleaning out the motor and everything so like before fifth day i'm like okay hold on now something not right like something not right i don't think sea foam is supposed to be this long you know what i'm saying in my in my car system and if it is, it's not supposed to be smoking like, like my whole cabin was like full of cloudy smoke. So I just knew something wasn't right, right, right then and there. But I'm like, it's a new motor. It can't be, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just still right. Just checking my oil, still right. Everything's looking okay, you know what I'm saying? So two weeks go by. I'm like, okay, hold on now. I know for a fact it's not the sea foam. I done filled up my tank. Um, roughly about maybe five, six times in two weeks, gas guzzler. So uh, I go talk to my, I go talk to my mechanic, the guy that installed my motor, and he's like, uh, check the valve covers. The valve cover gaskets might not be seated correctly. So I'm like, all right. So him being busy, I went and did the work myself. I'm gonna put a picture or a video of me doing my valve cover gaskets. Did my valve cover gaskets three times in the course of like two weeks thinking it was leaking so i took off my cold air intake took off my throttle body took off my intake manifold took off the spark plugs the manifold i mean the intake manifold the coil packs took off all of that just to get to the uh the valve cover gaskets went to autozone got their valve cover gaskets, as you I see, they're blue. Blue valve cover gaskets. The OEM ones are black. But yeah, I went there, got their gaskets, changed them out three times, thinking I'm set, I'm stressed out, making sure I don't roll the gasket as I'm installing the cover. And um, I put everything back together and it's still leaking oil. So I'm like, okay, something else is wrong. So a um, little funny story. When I was installing the intake manifold, I forgot to plug in the map sensor in the back. It's a little map sensor in the back of the intake manifold. I forgot to plug that in and the car was just like surging and rocking and bucking and shit. So I had to take it right back off, had everything locked down, screwed in, ready to rock and roll. Mind you, I, I was doing this on the 4th of July because I wanted to drive my car on the 4th of July. So I woke up extra early, you know what I'm saying, trying to get my car from start leaking oil so I could, you know what I'm saying, ride around on the 4th of July in my car and it just, it ain't happened like that. So, um, after I got there, everything hooked up and I figured out that it was still leaking oil. I had put a container under the engine 
catch the oil sure enough it was still leaking oil but it wasn't like a lot of oil but it was a fair enough amount you know what i'm saying so i take it to uh i got two mechanics so i take it to my other mechanic because the guy that installed my motor was busy so i took it to my other mechanic he had the car for about since like uh the 5th of july to like i don't know for like two weeks basically uh, first he said uh, he put the car in the air and he seen oil spots on behind the valve covers so he redid the valve covers charged me you know what I'm saying a couple hundred dollars to the valve covers mind you I did the valve covers three times so I get the car back uh, I'm at my mama house and something just told me to look under the car I, I didn't even spec I just thought it was fixed I didn't even you know what I'm saying look at it when I first got the car. So, sometimes look under the car, look under the car, the car is still leaking oil, y'all. I'm gonna put a picture right here. As y'all seen, the car is still leaking oil. So I text him like, yo, I took my, I brought my car to you for you to fix this issue and it's still doing what I asked you to fix. He's like, okay, well just bring me the car back tomorrow free of charge this this that you know what i'm saying so i'm like, i already bet so i bring him a car the next day he's like man that's weird uh i don't know what it could be leaking from but i'm gonna figure it out free of charge i'm like all right yo all right cool sound good so about a, a week about seven days go by he texts me like it's 100 your uh your head gaskets your head gasket or your head gasket on the driver's side is leaking. As y'all know, the head gasket connects to the block of the motor and the cylinder head. But mind y'all, them are brand new from when I just got the motor put in. You know, they had to put my old cam and everything back in, or my new cam and everything back in once I once the last motor seized up. So I'm like, it can't be the head gaskets because they're brand new. It's possible, but what's the odds? You know what I'm saying? It's possible. Anything's possible. So I'm like, okay, all right. So I come get the car. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving it, still leaking oil. Still, the oil is leaking onto the exhaust and burning, which is causing that misty blue white color. And it's filling up inside the cabin of the car and pushing out the back. So like a little bit's burning on the exhaust and pushing out the back. As I'm going down the street, it's like a whole white trail of smoke. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be running around like that. You know what I'm saying? I got my YouTube name on the car. I got, you know what I'm saying? It's a nice looking car. I don't want it to be riding around the street, smoking up the whole street. So I get the car back. I contact the person, my old, my, my, my first mechanic that uh, put my motor in. He's like, uh, bring me the car. I'm going to figure out what's going on with it. So he had my car for another seven days. So yeah, y'all, this summer I really ain't had my car, but he had my car for another seven days. And um, so the problem was that this is a truck's block. So it's, it came out of a Ram, a 2014 Ram 1500 block. So with that being said, on the Chargers and Challengers and Chrysler 300s, the oil dipstick is on the passenger side. And right here. And on the Ram 1500s, the oil dipstick is on the driver's side over here. So uh, when I got my new motor installed, they changed my uh, oil pan and everything. So my oil dipstick is still on the passenger side, the left side. So with that being said, that leaves a hole over here from the Ram 1500's oil dipstick. So they plugged it when I first got my motor put in, but they didn't plug it, seal it good enough. So he sealed it and so far so good. I ain't had no oil leaks, nothing like that. So if y'all do ever get a motor from out of a Ram 1500, just make sure that you guys seal that oil dipstick block. I mean the oil dipstick uh, 
I'm gonna say oil dipstick, what do you wanna say, tube area, so it doesn't leak oil. But other than that, um, as y'all see, we got the we got the 20s on there, the rims on there, y'all. As y'all see, we painted the calipers green. As y'all see, we got the radios on there. I bought off my homeboy. He gave me a good deal on them, y'all. You know, radios. Hopefully, we're going to be pushing enough power to actually, you know what I'm saying, use, get the best potential of the. We still got more ideas coming for the car. Uh, I'm going to just give y'all a little update of the car. Yeah, y'all. So, we got... Uh, Face mask, as y'all know, well, I don't even know if y'all know, but this is like my sixth one. I just can't, the car is just too low and it keeps scraping everywhere. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep, I keep warranting them out, but they told me that this is my last one on the warranty. I can show y'all the email. Dude, I don't think I'm bullshit, but you can only warrant it out so many times, I guess. Makes sense before they stop sending you free ones. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do. If I'm gonna raise the car up or stop buying them or what, but yeah. Uh, those keep ripping on me. Uh, also, we gotta get the car repainted. It has a couple of blemishes on there. This stuff is little minor stuff right here. Y'all see that? This goes to little minor little strips. Then the main one that I have to get fixed, we're gonna take this off real quick. That right there. That right there, that's great. That is not expected. But yeah, that scrape right there, y'all. That is terrible. It's kind of deep. So the backstory behind that is I was trying to tow my vehicle put that back on there so nobody can see my little scrape we're gonna call this the band-aid from, from here on out till we get that fixed because it's covering up the scratch but uh the backstory behind the scratch was i was towing my i was getting my vehicle towed and you know my vehicle low as shit it's just sit low so it can't and it got the front splitter and it can't go up the bed of a truck so I have to always, every time I get my car towed, I have to take my front bumper off. So I took my front bumper off and me not paying attention, I had the front bumper, I guess, rubbing against the car or rubbing against something that was on the back of the tow truck. And that's what caused that little uh, scrape or scratch or whatever you wanna call it. But I haven't had the car, so I haven't had time to get it fixed. But now that I got it, I'm a deathly go ahead and get that worked out uh, other than that uh, I gotta figure out a way to snap my bumper on a little bit better you see right there I brought new bumper uh, support brackets I just gotta figure out a, the best way to mount my bumper so it doesn't keep coming off I might have to jack it up one day and I will record it, me, you know what I'm saying? Figuring out the best way to mount my front bumper so I don't have to keep buying it. It's like my third SRT8 front bumper. And I don't want to keep buying them, they're not cheap. Then I gotta get it painted and all that extra stuff. But yeah, y'all, we still got the demon hood. I'm gonna go ahead and close it for y'all so y'all can get a full look at the car. I haven't did no uh, performance upgrades to it because I haven't even had it. We still got everything the same. We got the disc brakes. I don't even know if I told y'all about the disc brakes. Wait, we got the disc brakes. I need to upgrade the brakes to Brembo's because once they get hot, they don't like to slow the car down. I can see the performance goes down once the car, once the brakes heat up. I thought uh, I could get by with drilled and slotted rotors Mm, I mean, it probably helps a little bit, but nothing, you know what I'm saying, too noticeable. So we is, so we are gonna get Brembo brakes, front and rear, soon, maybe over the winter, maybe, I don't know, if I catch a good deal on 
marketplace or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, y'all, this is it. Still got the six square manifold fully tuned by Jay Green. Oh, another thing that I had to order was uh, my intake, my uh, air sensor right here. I had to get a longer cord, 24 inches. The stock one wasn't long enough. I finally was doing some research. I was at home just doing some research because I had the stock one just laying right here and the car wasn't throwing no cold. So I wasn't really like pressed about it. And you know, just bored one night. I was doing my research and um, yeah, they told me that you gotta order one off of Amazon, a longer, a longer cord. So ordered that, put it in the six, four minute uh, quarter intake. Got it snapped in right here. I should probably zip tie that together so it's not just freely running. But yeah, other than that, we all good, y'all. She been running good. I done had her back for about a couple weeks now. Gonna get back into this YouTube stuff. Uh, yeah, y'all. I don't know if I told y'all, showed y'all or not, but here's the interior of the, of the car. We got the red and black RTCs. I never even seen these seats before. Wow, you can't exalt them to me. So we got the red and black. Only thing I don't like about these seats is they not heated like my other one were, like, like the black ones I had was. But I guess it don't matter because it's not like I'm gonna be driving this car in the winter, so it don't really matter. But I do gotta clean the clean the seats, clean the inside of the car. I see it is a little dirty or whatever. I'm gonna get a detail now that I for sure got the car back. Just had to show y'all that. Get y'all a little update of the full car, everything. Yeah, more and more walk around. y'all so i didn't left my at the parking lot that i was in i forgot to get y'all a little bit more that was going on with the charger and then we gonna jump straight back into where i was at so basically remember when i told y'all the car was leaking oil and uh backup mechanic my second mechanic couldn't figure out what, what was going on with the car so he called a guy from the dodge dealership and the guy from the dodge dealership was uh basically saying that i had too much crank pressure so it was coming out, it was spilling out of the gaskets. So they, um, he checked all of that. It wasn't too much crank pressure. I'm not sure how he checked that, but he checked that and it wasn't too much crank pressure. So um, then they went, you know, well, I don't know if you, I don't know if I told y'all, but if you look at my previous videos, you can hear like a tapping noise. It's like a lifter, a bad lifter. It's not the lifter, I had an um, exhaust leak from my header. I think my driver's side header was leaking due to my mechanic that put in my cam and everything. He stripped a bolt and he took the exhaust manifold bolt into the head of my car and never got it out. So it was just leaking and due to access heat, it burnt off my gasket because it wasn't sealed completely from what my second mechanic was telling me so they thought that due to the excess heat from the leak that it was leaking oil that it was making the gasket lose density and leaking oil that way so um he went and he fixed my exhaust header my man of my head got the boat out sealed it all up boom still leaking oil so now i had to just when i got back here i just thought about it like damn i didn't even tell them everything that was going on with the uh with the car and everything so now we finna jump back into the beginning of the video y'all i just had to throw that in there y'all a little update of everything that was going on just remember that make sure y'all like comment and subscribe